So I was recently vibe coding on a project over here trying to add some optimistic updates to these rectangles when I dragged them around. And I went to cursor and I kind of checked out like how much that one prompt costed me. And in the UI, it says it costed me $1.47. It used almost 2 million tokens using the O3 model. And that kind of got me thinking of like, is using LLMs actually sustainable in the long run for like developers? So that's what the talk is going to be about today. I'm going to kind of talk about using an LLM and, and how it could basically drive up the cost of having like a junior developer. So let's try to break this down. And I'm definitely curious in the comments, give me your opinions on this because this is just an idea that came through my head like today. I haven't really thought too hard into it. Okay, so let's just kind of put some stuff in here. So the average junior dev hourly rate at least in the US is $81,000 for salary and $40 an hour. And I would assume if you just give cursor or Claude code to a junior, they're gonna be doing a lot more vibe coding, a lot more just prompting constantly to try to get the features and the bugs fixed. And eventually after doing it enough, I've seen it on all my projects. I've been vibe coding on this one. I've been vibe coding on this one. There's other projects I've been vibe coding on. Eventually you hit a brick wall where no matter how many times you prompt the AI, whether it's like Claude 4, whether it's O3, it just cannot fix the problem until you start giving it better context and you start giving it more technical details to solve the problem. And a lot of the times the junior dev, maybe even a mid dev, will not have the experience to be able to break down the problem into sub problems and give that technical guidance and hand holding to the LLM to let it, you know, properly fix what it's trying to do. So if you guys agree with what I kind of said, you have to agree that there is a cost associated with using an LLM. So LLM cost and if you use it a lot then yes your costs are going to go a lot higher every hour like maybe you might use five dollars an hour maybe you might do 10 and if you are just like prompting after prompting after prompting and you get into this like ai death spiral where the llm just can't fix your problem but yet you keep on reprompting it i bet you there's cases where there's someone out there who spent the same amount in, a, in an hour that they get paid in the hour so they basically burn through their whole salary and now they've made nothing for that whole hour of work. Okay, so there's like a, a range here. And, and I guess in the comments, if you have actually solidly tried vibe coding, like have you even gotten close to how much you make an hour just from vibing within an hour? And from what I'm looking at cursor, I mean, it definitely is possible. If one prompt can burn through almost a dollar and a half. So using that idea, I spent about a dollar and a half on a single prompt. And that took around three minutes. I think it did a lot of thinking. It churned through all my code. It tried to figure it all out. And if we were to extrapolate that to an hour of constantly reprompting this, we'd get up to, I think, $30. Because 60 divided by 3 is 20. 20 times 150 would be 30. So at that rate, we end up getting close to knocking off $30 from my $40 an hour pay, which honestly is just not sustainable, right? I would rather just not use AI and just sat there trying to solve it by hand and still get my full salary. Now there's some instances where maybe your company's paying for your AI. And if you work at a company who's paying for your cursor subscription and your overage or Claude code in your overages, then maybe they are fronting the bill for your AI cost. But now what's happening is that the business has to basically pay you $70 an hour or more depending on how much you're prompting. And again, this is like the worst case scenario. I'm hoping people aren't just blindly prompting over and over again because like, if you're not paying attention to how much tokens your stuff is using and how much it's costing you, like you're probably going to screw yourself over, honestly. So ultimately, I think the truth is, again, somewhere in the middle, right? You could probably burn through your whole $40 an hour by just vibe coding constantly. But in reality, the better you get as an engineer, the better you get at prompting, the better you get at adding context, the better you get at iterative development and just saying, hey, I just need you to fix a small little bug because I'm stuck you're gonna spend less and less on the LLM, especially, um, so let me just drag these down. This is probably like the reality of the situation where maybe having these subscriptions just increases your junior devs to 45 to 50 an hour or something like that. And maybe that's something that the business will be willing to front. They'll pay a little bit extra as overhead to employ these engineers so they can still churn out more features. But I'm guessing that they probably put some type of cap on the overall spending they can do because eventually you're going to hit that diminishing returns point where like you're actually spending more money trying to let the LLM solve stuff for you instead of just like taking the time and doing it yourself or truly understanding how to solve it. Now, another thing I want to point out is like in cursor, I have used over 69 million tokens uh, and this is like $50 of Claude code thinking and then auto mode, which is free on cursor right now has used about $10. So my total is $61. I only pay for a $20 a month subscription. So 
So I do think all these like AI code assistant companies are running in the negatives because they want to onboard you onto their product. So they're giving you a bunch of free tokens, but maybe in the future, in a year or two from now, they're going to actually get rid of these free tiers because I just don't think it's sustainable to like not actually make profit off this stuff. So if I go to like my overview, I've only spent like a dollar over my usage. Maybe I'm not understanding their graphs or their graphs are a little bit broken in their dashboard, but like, yeah, it says I don't have to pay for any of this stuff. Maybe I don't truly understand what the $20 a month I'm paying for includes, but like I haven't been paid for any of this stuff in the dashboard, at least according to them. So they're all fronting that. But again, I do think this is like a worst case scenario. I bet you this is like the first time I used O3. There was no like caching going on. Um, and I probably just burned through a bunch of money. I'm curious to hear your thoughts as well. Like, do you think this was a overestimate of how much LLMs are costing people every hour? And my use of this $1.47 was like a bad example. But it would be interesting to see like, okay, after a year or two, is the cost of buying a GPU going to run down? Is the energy a GPU is using going to decrease? Is the cost of using these LLMs going to decrease? Are these LLMs just going to get more accurate and better and cost even more? One thing I'll point out is that I haven't even been using max mode, which I think even costs more. So if you have been vibing hard with these tools, I'm very curious in the comments, like let me know how much an hour you're spending on tokens. Now, as I said before, most of the times I'm vibe coding and using AI are on my side projects, right? At work, the code base is too large. I have found that AI doesn't do very well. And so my costs for using an LLM is basically zero because I don't use it that much. And I do use like the free stuff like, you know, chatgpt.com and like cloud code. But I would be curious that if you are using these LLMs, how much are you spending every hour once you get past like the initial free credits that they give everybody? All right, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this talk. Have a good day and happy coding.